Okay, we're here in Final Cut Pro and we're gonna have a look at how we can edit the speed of a particular clip in a few different ways. So we're gonna have a look, first of all, at how we can basically do a, a speed up or a slow motion of a clip. So with a clip placed on the timeline, we can select that clip and then jump to our options here, which enable us to retime our clip. So you can see the shortcut as I hover over that is Command and R. So we can create a slow clip, which will create a slow motion. Okay, and obviously, depending on what camera you use, you need to make sure that you're not getting too much distortion between the frames or too much jumpiness between the frames as you're creating your slow motion, okay? So basically, that's a, a slowdown of the clip. And I'm just gonna do Shift and Z to fit this back to the, the screen. And once we've added a slow motion, we can grab the handles at the end here to speed up our clip, okay? Or slow it down even more, okay? So basically, when it's blue, it's sped up. And when it's orange, it's slowed down. And when it's exactly green, if we can catch that, then it's a normal speed. Okay, so that's how you know whether something is sped up or slowed down, whether it's blue, green, or orange. Okay, so that's one way that we can speed things up and slow things down. The other option here is for um, holding a frame. Okay, so if we click here, we can basically place our playhead at a certain point in time and then come to hold. Okay, and it will create this frame that is running at zero percent so essentially a freeze frame and we can hold that for as long or as short a period of time as we want so we can basically have it freeze and then start again or freeze for a longer period of time and then start again let's undo that now often what people want to do is ramp to a certain speed so if we come down okay then basically we have this option speed ramp okay which will speed up our clip or slow down our clip from or to zero percent so if we grab our whole clip here and do two to zero percent it's basically now if i hit shift z we're going to see that this is going to play through at normal speed and it's gradually going to slow down as he comes into the spin and then if we look towards the end of this speed ramp so we zoom right in you'll notice that we have in here Okay, also that same 0% frame. So we can stretch that out for a longer period of time. Okay, so that we're holding the, the frame at the end for a longer period of time. Okay, and because it's ramping, it's fading between those different clips here. So we can see it's slowing down and then eventually holding that frame Okay, and then at the end of the clip, it jumps back to, to normal speed so we can still stretch that out. Okay, so that's a speed ramp. Now, if you wanna do that quickly rather than over a long period of time like I've done here, then essentially we can do a range selection. Now we can do a range selection for a, a number of different options in Final Cut Pro. So I'm just gonna do Shift and Z so I can see my whole clip. So if we grab from our toolbar here, the range selection tool, we can select a range of our clip so if we want to slow-mo this first spin, for instance, we can select a range and then we can just use a regular slow motion of, say, 25%. So now it's going to play through and then it's going to slow down and then it's going to jump back to the, the normal speed. Okay, so that's using the range selection, but it's jumping straight from 100%, gradually slowing down and then to 25%. Okay, if we want to ramp that a little more, then we can choose with that range selection selected the ramp speed option. Okay, so we can go to 0%. Okay, and it's basically going to ramp it over a shorter period of time now into that slow motion, and then it's going to briefly freeze at the end and then jump back to 100%. Okay, if we want to make a change at the end here specifically at the end of that selection so that say we we're ramping it back to 100 percent rather than just having the quick jump we can actually use the up and down arrow keys the cursor keys on the keyboard to jump between those two points so i'm going to jump to the end here and press i to add an in point and it's now going to select the rest of the end of that clip and i can now go back to ramp um, and ramp it from zero and back up to 100 percent. okay so now he's going to slow down and then speed back up okay so we're going getting slower and then speeding up as we move through that ramp 
and then back to 100%. And then at the end of this clip as well, so I'm just toggling the hand tool on by pressing H there to, to move around. If I deselect this, I'm back at 100% so I can stretch this out. Okay, so that's one advantage of creating freezes as well with this ramping method using the hold frame in the middle there. And simply because um, we can still edit the end of the clip, we're not making a freeze frame that's totally independent of that original edit. So if you've made freeze frames before, you'll know that you can come to any point in the clip and go to edit and then add freeze frame or option and F, okay? And that will add a freeze frame, but it's not connected to the rest of the clip, so we can't stretch it out and edit back in those timings. So that's the nice thing about this ramping that we can do is that we can ramp it up and bring it back down, okay? So the other options um, that we have here are really to do, if we select this clip again, with the video quality, okay? So we have normal, okay, frame blending, which is gonna basically add a little more mo motion blur between each of the frames, okay? And then also we have optical flow, which is gonna try to make a better mathematical estimate of what should be between those frames. And it's gonna analyze your clip. For a longer clip, it's gonna fill up some hard drive space, but then it's also going to um, after transcoding and analysis, it's then gonna render out that version of optical flow. So this is one method of trying to improve uh, your slow motion, particularly if you're just using a, a regular camera that's shooting at 30 frames per second, sometimes the optical flow can increase the, the quality um, of the, the slow motion. Okay, so for this short clip, the optical flow analysis didn't take too long. Now we're rendering out the clip itself. So we should now see this clip. Close this background task window. See this clip with the optical flow added. Okay. Okay. And so it's just trying to make a better adjustment. And we'll probably get a better idea of what's happened here if we view it 100%. So it's doing a different algorithm for blending the frames together using optical flow. Okay, and you can get some nice results with it. Um, sometimes it can create some strange effects um, in there, but that's just to do with the different type of algorithm that's being run on your clips. Okay, let's uh, jump back to our clip. I'm gonna select it all and just take it back to normal speed. Okay, so now also in here, the other options that we have are things like rewind. Okay, we can reverse the clip here as well. And then also we have the options here for the speed transitions, which is really the, the ramping that we're talking about before. So it's actually making sure that when we do the ramping, it's blending between those transitions. So if we use the range selection tool here and make a speed adjustment, we'll slow it down to 50%. If we come to the end of this section here, mark another endpoint and then slow it down again to 25%. This grayer area here between those options is basically this speed transition. So it's transitioning in these areas between those two speeds. So essentially you're getting a blend between 50% to 25% as we slow down. And I just spotted here that we've seen one of the funny things that happens with optical flow. We can see the arm there on the right hand side doing a strange growing motion, which is basically the, the blending of the frames. So it looks like the arm is changing shape rather than just moving. Okay, so you can see here, it has a funny effect and you just gotta make a judgment as, as to whether that will work for the edit you're doing, okay? So that's a quick overview of how to speed up, slow down, hold your frames, and then also how to do the ramping. The custom speed is useful as well. In this area, we can set a specific duration for our clips to run. Okay, so if you're trying to fit something into a certain time, then you can type in the hours, minutes, seconds, and frames um, in this area here. Um, and we can also adjust the, the speed rate um, here as well, okay, to, to make changes. The ripple will mean that it ripples that effect further down the clip.
okay, rather than bringing more of that clip into the timeline. Okay, I hope that's been useful and go ahead, try that out on some of your clips and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.